my name is Sandy Baird, and this is What's Happening, which occurs once a month, approximately, where these experts get to comment on current affairs and everything that's bothering our country and, in fact, the world, since our country seems to a lot bother the world. This is Ian Stokes with me and Mark Estrin, and I'm Sandy Baird. And I guess what we're going to start with today is this controversy about guns. Is that right? Or what? No, why not? It's, okay. It's certainly ha happening today. It's right. certainly going on. Um, it came to my mind about guns is that uh, this, this United States still has what's called a Second Amendment. And we are one of the only countries in the world which probably, first of all, has a constitution in the first place, and second, have, has a Bill of Rights. And in that Bill of Rights is the Second Amendment, which guarantees to the people, uh, and there's a controversy about whether people organized in a militia or people themselves have a right to bear arms. And the latest case from out of Washington, D.C. in the Supreme Court, which was the Heller case, uh, seems to indicate that the court, at least at this point, feels that individual citizens have the right to bear arms. I would also mention that the right to bear arms is outlined in the Vermont Constitution, and that Vermont Constitution was adopted before the Constitution of the United States. In the Vermont Constitution, it's even much clearer. People under the Vermont Constitution here in this wonderful state have the right to bear arms, but they also have the right not to bear arms, which I think is probably the best kind of definition of the right to bear arms. It also includes the right not to bear arms. I would argue that that means that people don't have to be drafted, but I might be wrong about that. So anyway, let's talk about guns, right? What do you guys well, think? Um, since, since Ian is British, maybe he would have a different take on the Second Amendment, right? Well, it doesn't apply, of course. Uh -huh. um, and guns are much more heavily reg regulated in the, in the UK. I mean, in just about every country, I suppose. In the other world. Than, uh, other than the, U right. the US is one of the least regulated, right. I suppose. But the, and the regulation is done through legislation. And there's currently a flurry of legislation going through states legislators and also in Washington, D.C., mm -hmm. relating to the uh, uh, possession and access of guns. So um, w whether those are constitutional or not, uh, maybe is one issue, the, but the, perhaps uh, equally or more important is the question, will they solve the problem? The problem mm -hmm. being right. gun violence, of which mass shootings are the component of gun violence that grabs the headlines and apparently provokes uh, response mm -hmm. in legislators. Well, Britain doesn't even have a constitution, a written constitution. Is that also correct? It's not written. Right, correct. right, yeah. right. So uh, the United States probably was one of the first, certainly probably maybe was the first republic that had a constitution. I'll bet you. Not certain, maybe the old Italian city-states had constitutions, but the United States certainly was the uh, first republic that I know that had a constitution, and most specifically had a Bill of Rights, which of course are the rights that are guaranteed to individual citizens against the tyranny of government, right? So, yeah, so right. the, this constitution and, and its amendments are they're all, they all happened quite a long time ago. Mm -hmm. So this raises the question, are they pertinent to today's... Well, is the right to free speech pertinent? Um, that the one right is, to worship that, as you wish or not? Or not? The right to assemble or not? Yeah. So the, the, um, the, difference, the difference relating to free speech, of course, is the, is the availability of internet and, and the means that people have now mm -hmm. to, to broadcast their thoughts to, right. and their, their speech to a much wider audience. And the difference relating to the bearing of arms is the, uh, the technology of weapons that... Uh, is that such a huge difference? Well, think? I think the, the, uh, the technology has co produced a number of changes so that mm -hmm. now, although one can possess a hunting rifle, one can't possess a I believe a running rocket propelled grenade <laughs> or tactical nuclear you, you, weapon. Well, you know, there are no. restrictions. There are uh, okay. restrictions have been introduced. Uh, in I don't think it's specifically around nukes, though. I don't believe that. But you're right. There have been some regulations on guns. Anyway, so Mark, what's your take? I, I, there's a couple of things we're talking about. Your take on the Second Amendment. Correct. Uh, the decision that the Supreme Court made was in 2008, so mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's 
it's sort of instructive that it's only this, this absolute certainty uh, is only 10 years old. Mm -hmm. That is on a legal level. And before that, it was everybody, it was a free for all and probably still is because who would expect the Supreme Court with the balance of the Supreme Court being that to, to argue any other way in 2008 about whether there's a distinction between a, a well being part of a well-regulated uh, militia and just being an individual uh, in which way, w what that was referring to, I personally, uh, you know, think it's quite clear that it had to do with uh, m militias and militias directed at at um, two things, uh, which one of which was uh, slavery, that uh, putting uh, uh, militias, having armed militias, uh, was a way to keep the slaves from rebelling, and in fact, it was a demand of the slaves, slave states, uh, the sla uh, slave owners, um, uh, that that would be the case. So The second one was, as you mentioned, was the uh, extermination of Indians, extermination probably, or self-defense, yes. as it was right. probably felt at the time. Uh, and it certainly wasn't um, related so that, you know, all of these people with guns could revolt against the government. Uh, could protect themselves against the government, but which is uh, part of what people are saying now, the reason that they need to uh, be able to individually ho uh, hold guns, aside from, you know, the, the break-in at the house, or if, uh, you know, the solution to a good guy, uh, to bad guys with guns is good guys with guns. Um, and it's quite incoherent what people are talking about. And I think, uh, so the whole question about the Second Amendment and whether or not the as currently constituted Supreme Court, politically appointed Supreme Court, uh, has any uh, metaphysical reality. It has a political reality, it has a legal reality, but whether in the case of... It has of a constitutional reality also. And, and, well, that's what, that's what I'm right. calling a legal... Okay. And, but whether in the case of, you know, the well-being of humanity or, you know, larger issues on which the republic was founded, like, um, you know, uh, the, the good, the best state of the, co of the people, uh, it isn't clear that it has anything to do with anything. Okay. Uh, I would disagree with that, but what, do you, with what about you, Ian? Remember that I wish we had brought our constitutions, because in the Second Amendment it says something like, to guarantee a free state, uh, people have the right to bear arms. And so I would disagree with Mark on a well couple of levels. Well-regulated militia. I would, no, it's comma, but also there's something else. There's something else, and, and that is, regardless of whether you like the present court or you don't. The present court has said that it is an individual right, uh, regardless of what we think about that court. And I, I, I don't, I, it's the court. What do I, you know, there's been political decisions made by the court all the time, but you have to obey them. It's well, not necessarily. Right. No, you don't have to, but it's troublesome if you don't, you end up in jail about it. But I, I mean, I like to be pragmatic and s ask end up the question. In court about it. <laughs> what? Know, end up in court about right. it. Right. Yeah. First step to jail, but the yes, so, <laughs> no, the second step. Yeah. Probably, uh, the, you're yeah, right. Yeah, you do right. have the right to go have from, a jury trial go from too. Jail to court. Yeah, right. But uh, you know, I think we have to ask what what are we going to use these guns for? Uh, you know, the what was the original intent of the of the Second Amendment? It was a sort of a collective self defense, I suppose. And now, well, um, well it was also to just to rebel against the. English Empire, which was the largest empire on earth. They had plenty of guns. So the American felt, and I think rightly so, that they also had to bear arms mm. against the but English so, Empire. But there are now more than, I think it's 285 million guns in private hands in, in the US. And so what, what do they get used for? You know, what, what, hunting. What, what's the purpose? So uh, hunting is the one we're definitely aware of in, in Vermont. Self-defense is one that mm -hmm. we're aware of, individual and you know, defending, protecting one's family, that's another one. Um, uh, 
there are several others. Uh, you know, there's, there's joining a militia. Mm -hmm. I'm not too sure what those militias are. Well, the militia. To do. I, I think legally the militias became the militias that were formed in the American Revolution became the National Guard. Okay, yeah. Um, so. And the National Guard used to be uh, for the defense of the state and to help in disasters. Mm -hmm. It then was federalized. It's now become part of the federal government. Right. Um, and mm -hmm. uh, that's a shame, it seems to me. But well. there, I mean, you know, there are other uses of guns, mm -hmm. and, and one of them is committing crimes. Correct. Um, another one is suicide. That's, mm -hmm. I think, a fairly, uh, fairly common method of committing suicide mm -hmm. is use of guns. So. You know, there are many aspects to this. Mass, mass shootings actually is a, is a small one, but of course it terrorizes the whole population or you know, huge numbers of people whenever it happens. Um, the numbers I saw recently were uh, that assault weapons may be correlated with the n number of incidents of, of mass shootings and also the number of fatalities, though it's difficult, to, of course, to argue cause and effect, but the, the um, increase, there's been a recent increase in the, in the um, number of incidents and fatalities in, in mass shootings, so that in the last decade since um, assault weapons became available again, the number of fatalities has been about 300, so about yeah, 30 I, a year, yeah. so it's actually a rel relatively small number of fatalities, though it has a those, of course, are, are random um, occurrences from the point of view of the, of the victims, and, and um, they have a huge effect on them. Okay, but I'll, I'll give you my position, which is not uh, particularly pro-gun, but I would argue if you take away guns from citizens, then guess what? The government has all the guns. Um, and the government uses those guns in a lot of ways that are also mass shootings, and that, that's called war. So in my, there's a simple solution in my uh, opinion, is that is to take away those kinds of weapons from everybody. And I think you could do that constitutionally. You could argue that the government simply shouldn't give contracts to places like Lockheed to produce them in the first place. But that would be constitutional, wouldn't it? Do you see anything wrong with that or anything that even smacks of the gun control of citizens? I was, I was really interested the other day that Trump said something that I believe will eventually happen, will. And he, I think, made a big mistake because he got in trouble with the NRA. But he said, let's take away people's guns without legal process, right? Okay, so wh how would that end up? We say, oh, good, that's a great idea. prior to due process. Prior to due process. Mm -hmm. Prior to due process. In other words, the government has the right to take away your guns, leaving them with in all the guns. In situations. He of, did, I'm not certain he even said that. No, of, of where they, they described, I think, five different situations. For instance, and it seemed typical to me, uh, when police are called to a home in which there's domestic violence and there's a weapon. Okay, so there's an incidence of domestic violence. When the police arrive, there's another principle in our Constitution, right? Which is an incredibly important co uh, constitutional right. You arrive at a scene with domestic violence, you don't, that person has not been convicted of anything at that point. He has not been convicted. So he, I'm using that word carefully because in general it's the male that is con committing the violence, but not always. Okay, so the police arrive and guess what they do do? And that is constitutional. They cite that person into court where the evidence is overwhelming that he did it. They cite him into court and then he or she get convicted of a crime. At that point, if it's a felony, they can't have guns anyway. The, the, it leaves out the scenario where, there, where there's someone waving a gun. And guess what happens in those situations, Mark? Or, or, a, or, a, stick or a shovel, or as occurred in the, in the New right. North End. What happens in those situations? Or a spatula. What happens? The cops shoot them. Right. Well, it's Period. Not. So then what's the uh, solution? The solution, it seems to me, if we're really worried about, particularly about assault weapons and the weapons of war, I agree that assault weapons are the weapons of war. They're not a, they're not a weapon that you should have anywhere on Earth, including in the hands of soldiers. Well, I certainly agree with that. The, the, the large, you know, my sense is, I, I saw this somewhere, it's, it's cute, but it's also accurate. Guns don't kill people. Yeah. People mm. with guns kill people. Yes, exactly. Exactly. And, and, um, and the gun, 
<laughs> By the way, it's just interesting that we talk about people with rifles. In 1791, that's when the amendment was written, people didn't have rifles. They had muskets. Right. A musket is a gun where you load the powder mm -hmm. and then you put the bullet in and you tamp it down and you do a flint and do that. And the, the, the science of guns made a big breakthrough during the Civil War. Right. And you guess uh, what rifle was produced? A Springfield rifle, my hometown. What, what a rifle right. is, is a long gun that has rifling in the mm -hmm. barrel. Mm -hmm. right. For targeting accuracy. Right. And, well, and, and uh, length. So, uh, I mean, length of shot. So in the middle of the Civil War, around 1863, the entire tactics, military tactics, had to change because the, the North and through smuggling the South mm -hmm. changed over from muskets to rifles. And they no longer could have this face-to-face -face contact and everything had to be done at a distance. All right, so that's nowhere near the ch but that's like 1863 and 1791 mm -hmm. you know it's not it's what the gu the guns that were being written about in the second amendment are distant relations in terms of but it doesn't matter it does matter it that uh, matters to you it does not matter general to and, the american people it, <coughs> well we're, right. We're not. I'm not the American people. I have an. Right. I have an opinion. Yes. And right. I agree completely with you that if you step back from this, that uh, it, it, it's the guns and the lasers and the and, and the, the nukes and the nukes and the uh, um, drones and you know the and you t and you talk about 17 kids getting killed, but at the very moment that 17 kids are being killed, 1,700 kids are right. being killed across the world by American weapons. By, pe by People legal with guns. violence. Right. So, legal. So the call question, I, need, I think, needs to step back right. to, to the level at which you're seeing it, but I don't, I don't want to insert you know, any... You know, you read today stories about these and this killers and this, you know, the series of mass killings and killing, mass killings is more than four people and there's six out of seven days that have mass killings. T to me, that leaves out the main thing, which is the dependence on violence in the culture and in the po in the politics right. uh, and 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 in uh, war, and our, frankly, our, well, war is our politics. I know. So right. we exactly. should re we exactly. should watch again the uh, Michael Moore's movie called uh, Bowling for Columbine, where he attempts to. Of course, this comes after the Columbine uh, mass shooting, and he's attempting to identify what it is about the United States that is, seems to attract mass shootings. Um, that, that, and and mm -hmm. he dismisses the availability quite early on, as I'm remembering yes, this. Yes, compares film. Canadian availability. Yeah, and so, as ca part so Canada of, has availability. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Part of that allows him to compare or to try attempt to correlate availability of guns with the, their, their use, their fa the fatalities resulting from their use. And, and he, he, he dismisses that quite early on. Uh, you know, the availability of guns is not the thing that correlates with. The, the incidence of gun violence. So there are other things, and and he he, he ends up with uh, uh, this argument of it's something about the culture. He can't exactly put his finger on it, though he blames the media for uh, for creating a, uh, a, a a culture of fear and and violence. Except the media is blamed for everything. <laughs> you know, um, it seems to me, and I, I maybe it's to blame. It somewhat is to blame, I think, currently in stirring up this mass hysteria against Russia. That's, I think, correct. In my view, that's correct. And Russia, of course, is the main superpower that the United States has always been hostile to and has always... It's resurgent, apparently, since after several years of... After the, uh, since 1917, though, even when it wasn't... When it was really not resurgent, it was, you know, the victim of great war and violence against Russia. Um, the United States has taken a position that Russia has to have a different kind of government. 
really. It's been true since 1917. And so I see most of the media contributing to this attitude that we should be at war with Vladimir Putin and with Russia. It's, and that, I think, is a media, it seems to me, objective mm -hmm. even. Can we, to can some, we, sorry. Well, to, go ahead. <laughs> no, to some extent, as old as that is, which is, mm -hmm. you know, uh, people are afraid the communists are going to come and take your toothbrush but away. But Russia's not communist anymore. I know, I know. But right? I mean, that's where it's done. Right. When it, you know, right. It's going through, and you still see the, the words commies out there in the right, and along the, you know, people I've heard it accusation. Myself. Uh, that, th that Russia is the main and Putin is the main Diablo yeah. is new. Because after... Nine, because it, things had kind of calmed down, mm -hmm. and after 9-11, we had a new Diablo, which was terrorism right. and Muslims, right. right? And so since 9-11 and until the 2016 election and environs, the the Russians were not. I mean, in fact, they, they were, were our partners in they some were, way. Yeah, and, right? right, and they were, and, and uh, Obama, which I don't have much good to say about, but, you know, was working to work with Putin to... Uh, and so the whole Putin demon thing is new and, and is essentially, regardless of how he reacted to 1917, is essentially a creation of the megaphone of the mainstream media. Well, not only the mainstream media, but the Democrats, yeah. unfortunately, well, who, are where, that's how it's right, who are trying to say that that's why Clinton lost, correct? But anyway, Ian, you want to sort well, of change the Well, I wanted subject. to um, go from Russia to North to Korea. Right. Um, I mean, one of, one of the um, unknowns in, in, the, in this newly breaking story about the potential for discussion between um, um, Kim and, and, and Trump is who's, where are the players lining up? We, do, we, we don't really know where Russia stands on this. We, we know maybe a little bit more about where, where China stands, uh, being neighbors of um, North Korea, of Korea. And, um, and we know that it was South Korea that, mm -hmm. um, it wasn't the State Department, it wasn't Rex Tillerson, it was and South Korea. And it won't be, Korea. I don't think. Yeah. It will not be. Um, yeah, apparently. Uh, so it was South Korea that um, um, coordinated this, this um, development and, and, of course, has been coordinating, maybe coordinating it for a few weeks since the uh, Olympic, the run-up to the Olympic Before Games. that, with the election of that President Moon. Well, right, the new president of South Korea. He was Korea. elected on the possibility of making peace with North Korea. That was why people voted for him, I believe. Right. Yeah, 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 and and created a a, a chain right. in, in the. It's also why like people voted for Trump, making yes. peace with Russia. Yes, I know, <coughs> I know it. Well, Trump Trump doesn't stir up difficulties with Russia so much. Well, yes, he does now. Oh, because he. I mean, it seems to they me turned, that he kind of has him to. Around. Yeah, no, they have. But right, but or they took, on. or they took control of him. Yeah. One or the other, but, but well, anyway, that, that's the way to turn but, someone around. And, and actually, if we <coughs> if we're talking about Korea, the um, Korea comes into the into the news in the last um, week or so because it's one of those countries which will be affected by the tariffs that mm -hmm. have been proposed. Um, so tariffs, well, is already affected by the, the. I think the washing machines came came were coming primarily from South Korea, um, and. Um, but now the steel and aluminum and steel of Korea, of South Korea, is apparently a fairly major um, source of <coughs> steel that we mm -hmm. import. And although China was always portrayed as the, uh, the source of this cheap steel that was flooding our market and therefore deserved some uh, uh, tariffs, um, it's actually, I think, somewhere like fourth in line. Um, the uh, Canada, the numbers I saw showed Canada and the EU, the European Union, as that's the why they're squawking so much, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, they're they're the, the they're the ones that yeah. are primarily mm -hmm. affected. I'm aluminum. I'm, I haven't seen the numbers for aluminum, but I imagine uh, Canada is a major source of aluminum because it takes a lot of electricity to to refine aluminum. So, probably is is uh, it comes from Canada. So so, uh, but Korea was hit 
with tariffs on wash on like on domestic appliances, um, and 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 now again with, with steel, so they've been hit twice but with uh, with economic sanctions, if you want to call it that, um, and yet at the same time they're back in the news relating to um, talks with with North Korea. The thing that I think is really interesting about the Koreas is that it confirms something that I really believe in, that peace will only come from ordinary grassroots people. I mean, it's clear to me that the United States doesn't really want peace with Korea. Maybe Trump, maybe he even does, but it doesn't seem to me that the State Department wants peace with the Koreas or Tillerson or any of the kind of establishment state states. They, they simply want to maintain this military posture. But the South Koreans really spoke in the election of President Moon. They want some kind of deal with North Korea. Why wouldn't they? I mean, if there's war with North Korea, guess who's going to be hit first? I mean, who would be hit first if the United States bombs North Korea? Then North Korea is going to bomb South Korea, where all our troops are, correct? So the South Koreans have a big interest in peace. They were the ones who pushed the Olympic Games and having a joint team. So it really confirms the idea that sometimes actors don't occur from the top down. Sometimes actions really occur more on a grassroots level. I think it did in, in recently in Burlington around the F-35s, frankly. And so I, I think this is, a this is terrific news. Then the other thing it seems to indicate to me is that the Koreans want to be together. They don't want this division. It was never in a division that they agreed to. You know, they want, they want to have Korea be for the Koreans, both sides, right? And, and yeah, so more immediately, what does North Korea want? We have to- I think uh, North Korea North wants North. the same, but I don't think North Korea, first of all, we have Korea to- Korea wants not to be right. attacked by the US. Right. They want, they want security, right. and they want the sanctions. Lifted. And they want to be part of the community of, of, mm -hmm. of nations, I would guess. They want to have some deals that they're not going to be starved about. I mean, this whole, these whole economic sanctions is really a, a, um, a war measure, isn't it? Again, I mean, they want to be normal as much as population. possible, yeah, against, uh, right? The, the, hmm. And I, wouldn't, I would guess that they also want to be reunited with their brothers and sisters. Why not? And they probably, as I know you've told me, Sandy, they are probably looking at uh, what happened in Iraq and what happened exactly. in Libya. Exactly. Both countries were on the way to having nuclear weapons, probably never really achieved any and capability. And what will happen to Iran? Well, uh, potentially, yeah, right. They, right. They're in the uh, crosshairs, aren't they, because of their nuclear program, which has, has been abandoned now, um, um, or severely restricted right. the, the um, nuclear program in Iraq was um, Did was they shut have down. a nuclear program? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah and um, subject to UN inspections. Uh, same goes for Libya. Right. And the leaders uh, from, that era, from that time in both Libya and in Iraq are, 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 came to a very unpleasant, unpleasant end. Unpleasant end, right, particularly Gaddafi. And, mm -hmm, and their countries are, were thrown into chaos, factional fighting. So, you... so North Korea doesn't want that to happen now. But they've other... agreed to put it on the table which I find, mm. right? Did you hear that, that, that he's agreed to denuclearize? Well, I think. Right? Well, they see the, I think the, you have to read that carefully yeah. because yeah. denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula right. would mean get right. the US exactly. um, nuclear right. threat out. Right. Mm, as well as the- And they hasn't agreed, he's agreed to meet and to, uh, that that would be on the table uh, but nothing's been agreed to, and Trump today, I think, said, or somebody said in the administration that there will be no negotiations during this trip that's just going to be talk. Yeah, but so what? I mean, that's huge. No, I, I agree right? that it's, Jeez, it's I agree huge. That it's huge but How long have we been at war with Korea? 53. Yeah. And it wasn't a declared war in the first place, right? It was just... What was it, a police action? Military action, a police action. Yeah, yeah police right. Action. But the division of the Koreas was never anything that the Koreans wanted. The, the, the division happened as a result, I believe, of World War II, right? And as a result of, and that occurred in Vietnam too, the division. The, I mean, the Koreans are one people, right? Having been occupied by Japan, the, uh, the Second World War brought an end to the Japanese occupation right. and required some 
kind of um, uh, sort of you know replacement of that of that um, government uh, uh, that that occupation. I'm I'm taking a class right now on World War II, and it seems to me that the minute World War II ended, which is a controversial, like when did it end for, for instance, for Vietnam? When did it end for Korea? It hasn't ended for Korea. Or Germany. Really. Or Germany, right? Um, but it seems to me that many, and I wish that we could talk more length about this at some point. Right away that the war, the Cold War began, right away. And that was events really in Korea and in well, Vietnam no, as well. it was evinced in the bombing, in, in the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Right. That was exactly. a signal right. to the Russians. Yeah, right, that's exactly true. So, but you did want to mention tariffs. I mean, I, I'm, I'm not, is it such, a, is this really a bad idea, tariffs? Well, or, or what? What's the deal? Tariffs are an economic measure, and economics really isn't a science. It's, it's you, you can't yes. predict what's going to happen because there are so many factors like relating to human human behavior. But I think in in general, um, tariffs uh, f f relating to international trade benefit um, d uh, the uh, can can potentially benefit the developing countries more than the developed mm -hmm. um, and I know I, I read a, um, a, a book by a, a originally Korean academic now in, in Cambridge England called um, Chang um, who um, who wrote a book about kicking away the ladder and then another book about the um, the bad Samaritan uh, cl claiming that um, tariffs benefited um, South Korea hugely in the sort of post-war mm. reconstruction, that they did restrict trade in a in a way that was beneficial to South Korea, and it and the U.S. Out. I mean, our yeah. whole development depended on tariffs of uh, the early uh, United uh, States. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So why then? Why is why is everybody so screaming that this is such a bad idea? I'm not, I don't know enough about it really to say, because but the attitude with which this is being done is punitive, not rather than protective. On whom? Whoever we wanted. It's a it's war without war. Right. But but it seems to me directed against, as you mentioned, Canada. I thought we were friends with Canada, mm -hmm. aren't we? Well, and is, was that intentional? I mean, with I the, the rhetoric, the election rhetoric was against these awful Chinese um, flooding our markets with and cheap steel. And we're going steel. to excuse Canada and Mexico. So is it really to get after China then? Well, that was the rhetoric, but the, the action doesn't correspond with that rhetoric. So is it just totally an insane idea or what? That's my question. It d doesn't look doesn't look very smart <laughs> to me, Is that uh, or the commentators that I'm reading. Well, anyway, I guess we'll see, right? It seems that the two places, the working class areas that Trump carried in Michigan and Wisconsin seem to be happy with this. Um, and that's what was reported mm -hmm. today. I suppose we don't have very much time left and we can't leave this program without mentioning what happened in the local elections which I thought were incredibly interesting on two levels. One, that our present mayor, who's been responsible for so much of the development in this town that's been so controversial, really did not win 51% of the vote, that he was outvoted by 51% of the electorate of Burlington. And they were that vote was divided between two people. Nevertheless, it was 51% of the vote. And the other thing that was really uh, interesting to me was that the proposal to have the F-35s based here was reputed by the electorate also. So I wonder if you, and that to me is gun control. You know, controlling the F-35s is a way to control planes, guns, and in effect, long-term war, right? Except that that wasn't the way it was presented. I know and, that, and, but it does, uh, yeah, uh, I know. And, and uh, in a certain way, not presenting it that way or keeping that uh, under was part of a, a strategy mm -hmm. that seemed to have worked, but wasn't finally very true. It wasn't clear. Well, yeah. Well, the, the the ballot item put in an introductory passage the support for the national right. uh, guard, and um, so. But the idea of avoiding the military consequences, uh, you know, was really 
down pedaled. Mm -hmm. No, I know, I know how it was. But, but relative to noise, I mean, mm -hmm. noise was not it, noise right. and other kinds of safety and uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. real estate values and health, uh, health and yeah, and you know, people. That's all true. But um, uh, I remember it was not an anti-war proposal. No. However, the reason I voted for it was because I'm. I'll do. I would. I view it as an anti-war measure because it was seeking to control war, the war machine or seeking to uh, control the military industrial complex and the politicians, by the way, who cooperate with that, right? It was a real, you don't think it was a rebuke to our politicians even? Yes, yeah, definitely. But, uh, uh, but in as much as it was not an anti-war proposal, it was not an anti-war vote. Mm -hmm. It was a health well, we vote. We don't really know that, do we? It was a community right? control vote. It was, uh, you know, an anti-Miro uh, uh, and Leahy vote. And Sanders? Know. Yeah, and Sanders. Yeah, that, that's those guys. Those guys, yeah. So, so. What, do you think they, what do you think can be done about it, though? I think our mayor just said that nothing is going to be done. Well, but we'll see. I mean, and the nice thing for me is that the pressure will be put on the, the terrible five um, Which I oh Scott too, <laughs> right? Forgot about him. <laughs> what they're going to do that that remains identifiable as democracy, and if they uh, completely blow this off, then there'll be consequences. What have they said? Does, has anybody even heard from them? Yeah, well Miro has already yeah. said he doesn't, and a lot of people all along the way have said, "Look, this is advisory. We'll see what the city council does too," because they. I think we have to look to see what citizens will do. Yeah, no, definitely. That's where the possibility is. I think we're out of time. Yes, well, anyway, thank you very much for joining us. We'll be back in another month or so. And meanwhile, I guess have a nice month.